So let's look at the Fourier transform duality of rect, that function which is a square function, and the sinc function. And the square function is very common in electronics and digital communications. It's the function which is zero for all negative time up to minus t, and then uh, it equals one between minus t and t, and then zero beyond that. And this function here, of course, uh, is often used for sending digital data. You switch something on for a digital one and switch it off for a digital zero. Uh, of course, we'd like to know about the spectrum of that signal to understand about the bandwidth required in digital communications and all sorts of other applications. So let's look at the Fourier transform. Okay, so the equation for the Fourier transform uh, tells us that you need to do the integral from minus infinity to infinity of xt, the time domain signal, times e to the minus j omega t over dt, integrated over dt. So for more information about the Fourier transform, there's other videos on the channel. Check them out in the link below. Uh, and then in this case, the signal is only at zero outside minus capital T to minus T. So this integral only goes from minus T to T. And in that range, it equals one. The height of this equals one in that range. Uh, so you've just got e to the minus j omega T at dt. And so, of course, this equals a minus one on j omega times e to the j omega capital T minus e to the minus j omega capital T. Uh, and this equals, um, we can see here, we, if we put in a 2 in here, and multiply by 2, divide by 2, this is the equation for sine. So we, we got 2 divided by omega times sine omega t. Uh, and then uh, if you uh, multiply this omega by a capital T, so you multiply the top and bottom by capital T, you get 2 times capital T, and that's you're left with the equation for the sinc function. Okay, and so what does the sinc function look like? Well, the sinc function is uh, a function here, which uh, is in obviously in this case in the omega, the frequency domain, uh, and it's this function here, which, uh, which decays off, oscillates and decays off uh, like this. And the crossing point, the first crossing point, and they're all regular crossing points, but the first crossing point is pi on capital T. And the height of this is 2 times capital T. So this is the Fourier transform, xj omega, for the square function. So this is the relationship between the square function and in the time domain and the, band, uh, the sinc function, its Fourier transform is a sinc function in the frequency domain. So if we really want a signal to turn on sharply and turn off sharply, we need bandwidth of this range, but we also need bandwidth actually going Technically, we need it to go to infinity if we want it really to turn on and off as sharply as this. Okay, so what about thinking about things in reverse? What if we were given an amount of bandwidth and we were wondering what time domain signal is going to fit exactly into that bandwidth? Okay, so this is the reverse. This is where we're looking at the duality of the rect and the sinc. So in this case, we have a, an amount of bandwidth we've been given from minus w to w. And if you're not sure what negative frequency is, there's a video on the channel on negative frequency. So check that out in the link below. Uh, and so this case, uh, let's make sure we're not getting confused by omega and capital W. So these are capital Ws. This is the bandwidth of our signal. So if we have to fit exactly into that bandwidth, we'd like to know the time domain signal. So what is the Fourier transform relationship of this uh, pair here? Well, again, we can use the formula for the inverse Fourier transform. So xt, this is going in the inverse, uh, just simply using the formula, 1 divided by 2 pi. And this, again, we're only integrating between minus w and w because it's 0 outside that range. Uh, and it's 1 inside that range. That's what we're going to put there for the height. So this is called a band pass filter, or we're just perfectly using that bandwidth. Um, e to the j omega t d omega in this case this is the inverse Fourier transform formula and for the same essentially the same working you can see it's very similar to this so you do the same working as here and you'll find out that this equals uh, sine of w not omega sine of wt uh, divided by pi t and again you can uh, you can multiply by the w's top and bottom and you can uh, get it into the form with the sink which gives you w divided by pi times the sinc function of capital W times T. 
Okay, so again, uh, this way in the reverse, we've just done the inverse Fourier transform and found out that the inverse Fourier transform of this square is a sink. So it's a sink, it's a, it, the square in one direction, a sink in the other, and it's the, it's the reverse. And this is exactly what we find also from the duality formula. So I'm just going to look at that in a minute. But first of all, just make the point about the heights and the crossings. So this is W divided by pi, and this first crossing point here is pi divided by W, capital W, not omega, capital W. Remember, this is the time domain. Okay, so we've just seen what the Fourier transform of a square is and what the inverse Fourier transform of a square is, and in both cases they were sinc functions. So I'll just point out why this makes, uh, uh, how you understand this with the duality property. So there's a standard duality property of the Fourier transforms. So we could have got this second result from the first result and the duality instead of doing it as a direct calculation that we did here. So let's just see that. What is the duality result? Well, the property says that the function in the time domain, if it has a Fourier transform pair, which is this x j omega, then, so if this is a pair, then this other set here will also be a pair. So let's try to understand it because it sometimes is confusing to people. So this is uh, x minus omega is what the formula says. And this says x of jt, that's from the formula. Let's try to understand this. What it means is if this, if a function with this shape, that's the better way to describe it, I think, if a function with this shape has a Fourier transform with this shape, then if you have a function with the shape of the Fourier transform shape, but in the time domain, so if you had a sinc function in the time domain, that's what this says here. So this is a function. I know it says capital X, and this is why it's often confusing, because people think that means it has to be in the frequency domain. That's not true. This is a function. It's in the frequency domain because we've, we've written it with omega here. But this capital X is a function that has a shape. Whatever you plot it against, you can decide. But the, capital X means that shape. So if we have capital X over here, we have that shape. This time we're deciding to put it in the time domain. So if you have a function with that shape in the time domain, then in the frequency domain, you will have a function that has this shape, the X shape, but in the frequency domain. So I think it's better to think of these things in terms of functions with shapes graphically, because uh, it's often possible to get confused with the mathematics when you think that the capital X means it has to be in the frequency domain, which is not so. Whatever you put in the brackets tells you if it's in the frequency domain or the time domain. So just to state that again, if you have a function, this function pairing here, if you had a function in the time domain that has that shape, so that shape over here, which is what we have here, then in the frequency domain, its Fourier transform will have this shape, which is the shape from here, which is that one, but in the frequency domain. That's the duality property. And you can make sure, you can see there's a scaling of 2 pi. The scaling of 2 pi comes in here. If you want to match up these two here, they're different by, if you do that transfer over to here, you've got to put the 2 pi in, which makes sense. And you can work that through. So if you found this useful uh, around uh, the digital communications and the bandwidth required and the time domain signals to fit into a bandwidth, uh, then uh, give this video a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And check out the web page in the link below where there's a full categorized list of all the videos on the channel, which can help in uh, people studying signals and systems and digital communications.